Good morning, and welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant this morning is Father Justin. Our Mass is being offered for all our parishioners and benefactors, and for all living and deceased mothers. A few brief announcements. Today's second collection is for the aid to the Eastern churches, to the churches in Central and Eastern Europe. A reminder that Ascension Thursday is this Thursday. See the today's bulletin for the times of the Masses. We plan to reserve a bus to and from St. Patrick's Cathedral on Saturday, June 17th, for Joseph Cervello's ordination to the di diaconate mass. Please see today's bulletin for more details and how to reserve a seat on the bus. And finally, our Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a Renegades baseball game on Friday, May 19th. Please see the flyer on the table in the vestibule for details. Please rise. Welcome Father Justin and join in the processional hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Number 169, number 169. Proclaim a joyful sound and let it be heard. Proclaim to the ends of the earth, the Lord has freed his people. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Your almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Lamb to Almighty God that we may celebrate with heartful devotion these days of joy which we keep in honor of the risen Lord and that what we we live in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many of the possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. 
Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that is to be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The truth of the, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, we want to wish all our moms, uh, whether it's uh, our earthly moms or most especially our heavenly mom, our blessed mother, uh, a happy Mother's Day. Um, so not just uh, also aunts and, and all women are called to be mothers, godmothers. And, and um, so all of us, all the women here, we just wish you a blessed uh, Mother's Day. And of course, we honor our blessed mother during the month of May. And this is why we celebrate Mother's Day during this month. It's the month of Our Lady. So I just want to uh, wish you all a blessed Mother's Day. Um, also, I thought it would be a nice thing to kind of reflect a little bit about uh, devotion to Our Lady, uh, because I know the women here, um, I believe you'll probably get her flowers today or roses today and whatnot. And the greatest gift that we could give our Heavenly Mother today, and so we all have a mom, uh, especially a Heavenly Mom, um, to give her the gift of prayer, especially the gift of the Holy Rosary. Uh, the word rosary actually means, you know, a, a crown of roses uh, that we give to Our Lady. So every Hail Mary that we offer uh, up to heaven, it's like giving the Blessed Mother a rose. It's giving her uh, a flower today. So hopefully not just today you do that, but hopefully you do that every day uh, by praying the Holy Rosary. Um, I just want to share one story with you uh, about the miracle of the rosary that, that I've encountered in my own life. So during the month of October and May, as a priest, I've always kind of promoted the devotion to the Holy Rosary and also devotion to the Brown Scapular being a Carmelite. So these are our, like our two weapons. Yesterday, we celebrated the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. 
And Mary came to those three shepherd children, asked them to pray the rosary every day for peace throughout the world. And of course, you know we need peace more than ever, uh, the threat of war once again, actually praying for the conversion of Russia. She asked for that. And she said, and to pray that her macular heart will triumph. And it's through the praying of the Holy Rosary and also wearing the brown scapular because the scapular is a sign of our consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So these are our two weapons. We could say the scapular is like a bulletproof vest and the rosary is like our, our sword, you know, to fight against evil, to fight against sin, because that's what's going to bring peace to the world. There's no political party or, or political uh, persuasion that's going to change people's hearts. How do we fight evil? Through love, through prayer. And that's why devotion to Our Lady is so important, because Mary crushed Satan's head. She crushed the serpent's head. Evil is already conquered. Why? Because her son, Jesus Christ, conquered sin and death by his death on the cross and by his glorious resurrection. That's what we celebrate now during the Easter season. But we honor Mary in the church always because Mary gave God a body. If Mary didn't say yes to the word of God... If Mary didn't allow that word to take flesh within her, the second person of the Trinity wouldn't be able to take flesh. So Mary said her fiat, she said her yes, allowed that word to take flesh, the fathers of the church first tell us, in her heart and soul, then in her womb, and ultimately in the world. That's what we hear in the gospel, right? What does Jesus say? Whoever loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. See, that's our vocation as Christians, is to give God a body in this world. To give flesh to Christ in this world, right? This is what he's saying. This whole, all the readings today are talking about that. That he has to leave, he's going to go return to his father. That's what we're going to celebrate in Ascension Thursday. That after the days of his resurrection, the glory of his resurrection that he was with his disciples, they were able to see him risen from the dead, they ate with him, they touched him, he was with them, but he had to return to the Father to establish his kingdom. And he's going to come again on the last day, that they may be cl closer than we think, we don't know. But he had to ascend to the Father, body and soul, back into heaven, and he's going to send the Holy Spirit. So we're going to celebrate that Ascension Thursday, and ten days after that we'll have the Feast of Pentecost, the end of the Easter season. So how is Christ present in this world? Well, yes, most especially in the Blessed Sacrament, the Eucharist. But why do we receive that Eucharist? Why do we come to church every Sunday? So we can receive Jesus so that we could be Jesus. Once again, you and I are called like Mary to give God a body. She received that word. The second birth of the Trinity took flesh within her and was born into the world. So too, when you and I come to Mass, the second person of the Trinity takes flesh on this altar, changing bread and wine to his own body, blood, soul, and divinity. And you and I, like Mary, are called to receive him and to give flesh to him, to make him alive once again in our world. How many, there are a billion Christians in the world, a billion Catholics in the world. Imagine if everyone lived by the Holy Spirit. This is what, this is what we're hearing in the, in the readings today. When they asked the apostles how the Spirit was so alive in the early Christians that they were raising the dead, healing the sick, delivering people from evil. You and I received that same Holy Spirit at our baptism. We were sealed with that gift of the Holy Spirit at our confirmation. Why isn't he alive in the world today? Is, is the Spirit not alive? Of course it could be alive. So we got to wake up, church. We got to we got to get that spirit going. We got to start doing what they did in the early church: raising the dead, proclaiming, prophesying. Now it says to use prudence doing this, but we're called to bring Christ alive once again in the world. I see miracles every day. Every day I see miracles, physical healings, spiritual healings. It can, it's true; it can happen, you know. But we have to come alive with with the, with the spirit. And I'd like to suggest Mary is the one who will help that come alive within us. I pray the rosary every day. Most of my inspirations I get during the Holy Rosary. I want to share with you one, one, one miracle. It happened a couple of years ago. No, more than a couple of years ago now. So when I was at another high school uh, working on my planes, 
uh, I would help out in the Yonk church in Yonkers, White Plains, and then my buddy was a priest in Staten Island. He was by himself, so it would give me an occasion to hang out with him on a Sunday afternoon, and then we would I would have mass in his parish. So it was a Sunday night mass. Now I was crazy. I was young at the time, so I would be starting Westchester, end up in Staten Island, and come back to, to Westchester just to start school over again the, the week. So it would be exhausting a lot, a lot of times. But again, I did it to kind of keep. Uh, company with my friend and, and also to help him out a little bit with masses. So um, this one, uh, it was a month of May of Our Lady, and I was preaching about the Holy Rosary and the importance of devotion to the Rosary. And on um, the morning I talked in the parish there, and then that evening I, I was going to do it in Staten Island. So I'm outside the church right before Mass saying hello to the people, and this man comes, he's all disheveled, he looks, he's wearing like, you know, just sweatpants, a, t- a sweatshirt, his hair's a mess, and he looks like a character, you know, and he starts, Yo, Father, I gotta talk to you. Now, Mass is about to start in like one minute, you know. I love when people say that right before Mass. Father, I gotta talk to you, right? And we're about to start Mass. So, he's like, I gotta talk to you, I gotta talk to you. I said, Sir, we're, we're gonna have Mass right now. I said, So please, um, come after, you know, after the Mass, I'll talk to you. So, he sits down, and then we have the Mass, and I preach about the Rosary and the power of the Rosary. And then after Mass, I was kind of exhausted, and I had to get back home, and I just wanted to get something to eat and go home. So here the man comes up. He's like, Father, i got to talk to you. And I'm thinking, I'm not in the mood to talk to this guy, you know. And my humanity, you know, I was tired, I was hungry. And so I kind of blew him off in a nice way. And I said, Sir, didn't you hear what I said about the power of the rosary? I said, I'm tired right now. There is nothing I could say to you that's going to help you. But you know who's going to help you? the Blessed Mother. I said, so pray the rosary. Whatever is going on right now, pray the rosary, ask her to help you. So I blew him off in a nice way. Okay, so I left, uh, got some meat, went home. So the following week, before Mass again, here the guy comes. Father, I gotta talk to you, I gotta talk to you. Now, I blew him off one time, I can't blow him off another time, right? So I said, okay, sir, after Mass, I'll talk to you. So whatever, I finished the Mass, the guy comes up to me. Father, I gotta talk to you. He couldn't wait anymore. I said, what, what, tell me, what happened? He said, you are not kidding about the power of the rosary. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I came to church. I've been away from the church, but I just got horrible news that I have a a cancer, and it's, 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 it's very bad. And I was very upset about it, and I had to go for more tests, and I didn't know what to do, and I was very upset, so I said, let me come to church. And then you were about to start Mass, so you couldn't talk to me, but you told me after Mass to pray the rosary. He said, I even have a rosary. He said, so I went to the religious shop. I bought a rosary. I got a pamphlet on how to pray the rosary. He said, so I was praying the rosary. I had to go for tests that week, and I kept waiting for the results, praying the rosary, praying the rosary. He said, finally, I go for this one test. It's a very important test. They were doing all these scans and whatnot, and they were going to give me a, a prognosis of, 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 the, of, the, of the cancer and how they're going to go forward with the treatments. He said, I'm praying the rosary, praying the rosary. The next day, I get a phone call, praying the rosary, waiting for this results. They call me right away the next day. Now I'm thinking, oh, this is bad news. Only bad news travels that quickly, right? He said, so I pick up the phone and the doctor says, we don't know. Your cancer is totally gone. We can't explain it. It's totally gone. A miracle. He said, Father, you were not kidding about the power of the rosary. I did, you know, God let me off the hook. But this power in the rosary, this power in prayer, especially to Our Lady. So I want you to take up this devotion, especially today as we honor her. Uh, We honor all moms. The greatest gift you give to your mom, not just flowers that are going to die in a week, give her the gift of prayer. Pray the rosary for her. Pray to your heavenly mom. Pray for the world. You know, prayer can stop wars. Mary wants the triumph of her immaculate heart. She wants the peace of Christ to reign in the world. But it only can happen when people's hearts are changed. How are people's hearts changed? Through prayer, through sacrifice. To allow that word of God to take flesh within us. This week I also have a beautiful story just to share with you because last week was Good Shepherd Sunday when we pray for vocations to the church. And this time of year, especially in New York, we have a lot of ordinations. Uh, we have a member of my community who's going to be ordained, Carmelite, next uh, Sunday. My ordination um, anniversary was, was May 12th. I've been a priest for 16 years. But there's a beautiful tradition. After the priest's hands are consecrated at the ordination ceremony, um, they take a cloth, which we call the manaturgium, 
and it's just a kind of a, a like a purificator that the, we dry the hands of the priest after his hands are consecrated so he can bless and consecrate the Eucharist. So we, we dry the, the oils off uh, with this purificator. And the tradition is that you give this purificator to your mother. And usually at the first mass, we give it to our mothers. And the tradition is this, that your hands, which were wrapped with this purificator as a priest and, and, and kind of cleaned with this holy oil, the sacred chrism that will now give the priest the authority to bless and to sanctify, uh, is given to your mother for her death. That sounds kind of dramatic, right? So, hey, Mom, happy Mother's Day. I've been, uh, my first mess was Mother's Day. Here, Mom, happy Mother's Day. Here's a cloth to be wrapped around your hands for when you die. But the tradition is this. As the priest's hands was wrapped, now that cloth is given to his mother for her hands to be wrapped in her death, in her casket. And the, the beautiful tradition is this, so that when she dies and she stands before God, and God says to her, what have you done, given to me? What have you done for me? The, the mom could symbolically show this thanaturgy and it says, I've given you my son, a priest. So it's very beautiful. It's not a dry eye in the church when, when, when you do that. But it's a beautiful gift. You know, and I, I also think of my mom giving me the gift of life. And that life now is affecting many other lives by being a priest, by saving souls. So pray for holy vocations if... God has blessed one of your children uh, with the vocation of the priesthood. It's a great gift, not just for your salvation, but for the salvation of the world. May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Seeking to walk in the way of the Lord and keeping his commandments, we now place our prayers before the throne of God. For the church, that she may be strengthened as she proclaims Christ to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those serving in the military and for all first responders, that they may be protected from every danger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that during this month dedicated to Mary, we may grow in our love and devotion for our Blessed Mother, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially in our own parish. And we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish, especially Gertrude Pickney, Michaela Barton, Diane Pezulich, Ellen Mitchell, Joanna Siricella, Anna Milio, Chris Slattery, Manuel Aristi, Terry Beresford, Angela Separano and Maria Reynolds, that they may receive God's comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Rena and Ducey, Mark Mend Mendlowski, and especially for all our parishioners and our benefactors, and for all living and deceased mothers for whom this holy mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, you love me. We pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for all the intentions in our parish book of petitions, and all those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We turn to our Blessed Mother now. We place ourselves, all those whom we love, and all of our cares, our church, our nation, our world, in our Immaculate Heart, we pray for a triumph. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, Shepherd of Souls, number 362, <coughs> number 362.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. Praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to your Lord together with the sacrificial offerings set purified by your graciousness. We may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to claim you, O Lord, this time of all to allow you more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment and the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You, therefore, most merciful Father, we may come a prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of the Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cosagonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask for their merits and prayers in all things. We may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as one you are pleased to accept, the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all to sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some shared fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Our ministers will beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And be us not in temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace, Father. peace, Father. peace, Father. peace Father. <clears throat>
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof.
If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord. I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete to abide with you forever. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restores us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we have a special blessing for all mothers. Father, we give you thanks for the many gifts you have given us, the gift of life, the gift of those who love us. We thank you today for the gift of all of our mothers, living and deceased. We give thanks for our mothers who have died and for the unique way they revealed for us your love. We ask that you bless them and keep them in your care until the time comes for us to join them in your kingdom. We ask your blessing upon the mothers who are unable to be with us here today. May they know how much we love and care for them. We pray for birth mothers who have loved their children so much that they have shared the gift of their child with those who could better care for them and their needs and give them a secure home. We pray for adoptive mothers that they may always know their special role of being a true mother, a relation of God's love for their children. We ask your blessings upon mothers who have lost children, that they may have your continuing strength and courage and feel the love from the parish of St. Augustine during the many difficult days they experience. We ask your blessings too upon those who would, be, who would very much like to be mothers but who are having trouble conceiving a child. We ask your blessings upon the mothers standing before us here. Give them the strength to love and to live the faithful and loving lives you call them to live. Protect and guide them, keep them in your care. We also ask God's blessings upon all spiritual mothers as well, godmothers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh. Yes, just two brief announcements. Uh, our wonderful Boy Scouts are having a, a flower sale. It's right on the right as you leave. And straight ahead, our wonderful Knights of Columbus are having a baby bottle drive. So please, if you'd be so kind, please participate as well. And have a wonderful day. So once again, we turn to our Blessed Mother Mary. We pray, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, most holy Mother of God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in our recessional hymn, Hail Holy Queen, number 210, number 210. Thank you.